You're listening to Mike Adams and Chris Savory, the record collectors from the BBC between now and nine tonight. Famous drummer in the world. The most famous drummer, of course, is DJ Fontana, the man who's actually put the backbeat into more records than any living creature that has ever breathed. And it's been reckoned that's more than five hundred million records. He's back in the UK again on one of his many visits to the United Kingdom. DJ, welcome. Tell us a little about the early days, the very beginning when you first started out. You worked in sort of kind of all kinds of strip joints. Well, yeah, I, I was a strip drummer uh, uh, in these little clubs. Down in Louisiana at that time, they had a lot of strip clubs and, and you, you worked strip acts and learned how to catch the bumps and grinds of the ladies uh, that were working, you know. And I guess that's, I learned a lot about that because uh, when I went to work with Elvis, we, we did the same thing basically, by accident. It, it wasn't planned at all. Uh, he went to run it all the stage like he always did. So when he'd do something, I'd catch his arm and I'd catch his leg and I, whatever he moved, I'd catch. And he he kind of liked it, so we just left it like that, you know. Why were you chosen as Elvis's drummer? What what did you have that uh, that Elvis liked? I, maybe it was his, maybe it was the strip show. Uh, <laughs> experience, you know. Uh, I don't know, maybe nobody had ever done that with him before, you know, but I just, uh, it was just a, a fluke that it happened by accident. The recording sounded very laid back in the beginning. You were sort of, Elvis's voice was very much to the front. I mean, was that deliberate? Well, that's the way they wanted it. Uh, they wanted to put his voice on top of everything. Uh, later on, he decided he didn't want that, you know. He just said, nah, just, we'll, we'll, everybody play at the same time, we'll have a good time. No, no overdubs like we have now, you know. And uh, that's that's basically what it was, and they kept wanting his voice up, 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 up. But he wanted the, the vocal group behind, him, right on top of him, the singers, the, the musicians. The, he wanted everything on top. Who originally wanted you to be laid back? Was it Elvis's personal decision with the no, band? I, I think it was RCA Victor. They wanted Elvis's voice naturally to be right on top, where they can control it. And he didn't want it that way at all. He wanted the voices right on top of him, the musicians right on top. He wanted everybody on top, which is almost impossible to do, but uh, uh, that's the way he wanted it. And I think he finally got what he wanted, you know, as a matter of him uh, raising enough cane about it, and he got it done. When you were traveling around, the, uh, did you have some funny incidents with Elvis? Any memories of things that made you laugh? Or sometimes not even laugh? Well, yeah, there was a lot of things we did. And, you know, we used to play games uh, driving down a road. And, well, he was a big firecracker uh, 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 he loved fireworks, and we'd, we'd stop every few miles and buy it. He, he wouldn't buy just a few dollars, really. He'd buy a hundred dollars worth of firecrackers when he stopped, you know. And he'd shoot them all day long. Just throw, and we had some little bitty firecrackers. They called them lady fingers or something at the time. And if he'd catch somebody in the back seat sleep, he'd just, he'd light the whole, there was about 50 in a pack. Right. And he'd light the whole thing and throw it in the back seat with you. It wouldn't hurt you. You'd get up out of that back seat, though. <laughs> When he used to bomb cars with his firecrackers, did they did they actually mark the cars? Oh, they left a spot on their cars. Sure, they did. They probably have to have them all painted every few months, you know. Did you? Did you? Was it mainly Johnny Cash that was the butt end of your jokes? No, Johnny. Had, we we rode with Johnny a lot because we worked with Johnny on some sun things, and all well, Jerry Lee's was on some of them, and Carl Perkins was on some. Uh, he didn't make any difference to him who it was, and, but it was all a game. They would do the same thing in his car, so it was. It was you throw some at me and I'll throw some at you. And, you know, they, they, they didn't mean to hurt anybody. They just, uh, they just got a kick out, I guess, watching explosions. Who knows? <laughs> Did you realize, as very young man, just how famous that you had become so quickly? No, you don't think about that. Uh, 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 me and Scotty and Bill, we said, well, just, it's a job, and we're gonna, somebody's going to have to do it. And that's the way you look at it. And we have to go from A to B every night, and we, we'll have to do that, too. You don't really think about it. And the main thing is, we were always like a day ahead of the press. If we was in Chicago, the next morning we had to be in St. Louis, well, we'd be gone that night before the papers came out, so we never read the papers to see what was going on. So we didn't know what, what, how big he was, actually. Now, you then went off to Hollywood with Elvis, didn't you, to make some films. Uh, what was it like in Hollywood? I don't know. It, it was okay. Uh, we're, we weren't actors, you know, and, and we we would do the soundtrack. We did three or four pictures regularly, but you had to get up at five in the morning. It, it's just it's a long, drawn-out, uh, it's not heavy work, but it's you stand around for hours while they change the light. It, it takes them all day to change the camera and uh, light. And, oh, 
It was nerve-wracking, actually. Now, uh, what was... You worked with Colonel Tom Parker. What was the Colonel like in those days? Was he, was he a powerful individual, bossy? Well, yeah, he was a yeah, he was powerful. There's no question because he he had the power in Elvis, and he 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 would push people around from time to time, uh, just just to show his power, uh, because he knew that he could get away with it because of, of his star. You know, it wasn't Elvis at all; it was the Colonel. He he took care of all the business, and, uh, and he was just a tough businessman. That's all to it. Just moving on now, because uh, as we speak, uh, DJ is going to start rehearsing for a show in the UK with Scotty Moore. Just tell me a little bit about uh, the days when Elvis came back out of the army. Had he changed? Not a, not a bit. He looked good, actually, because I guess the army toughed him up, you know, uh, with the exercises and things you do. He really looked good. I, I was surprised. I figured a lot of guys go in the army and, and they eat a lot, you know, and they... They, you know, they gained a lot of weight, but he he really, really looked good. I was surprised. I really thought he looked exceptionally well. Now, Elvis's last gig with you was back in 1968, which we've all seen the comeback special, not that he'd been anywhere. No. Do, any memories of that comeback special? No, we just, uh, I think that was one of the better, in fact, probably the best TV production that he'd done. And what it was, I think he wanted to go back on the road, so he, he had to have something... You know, he had been doing movies for eight or ten years. He needed something to boost his career with, to the general public again because he had just been doing pictures. So they thought that was a good avenue to go to get a big TV show special and then go on the road, and that's what he really did. That's what he wanted to do. Now, who else have you worked with? Who has DJ put the, the rhythm into? Which other artists have you worked with, DJ? I did an album, of course, with, with uh, Ringo Starr, uh, kind of a basically country album. Uh, I did some stuff with Tommy James and the Shondells. I worked on the road for a while with Gene Vincent. Uh, I've done some Dolly Parton stuff, early Dolly Parton, uh, Porter Wagon, mostly country. I did some stuff with Johnny Cash, Jerry Lee, Carl Perkins, uh, a lot of them actually. Marty Robbins, uh, just go down, the, you know, from the country field. Are we likely to see you touring more and more in Europe? Well, Scott and I, we're, we're talking about it now. And we're, we're getting some feelers out while we're here this time. And we hope to come back maybe and bring Carl, if, you know, if Carl is, is physically able, and maybe Ronnie McDowell, and just do like a package. And we're, we're hoping that will come up. Can I say, because I'm very privileged to be in this position, on behalf of all the thanks, uh, for all the fa thanks on behalf of all the fans for putting the beat into rock and roll, DJ Fontana. Do you want to say just a few words to the fans, DJ? Yeah, uh, keep showing up at all these uh, Hollywood, I mean, these... Uh, Pontons and all that, and, and you know, support your fan clubs and uh, uh, make sure you give money to charity like most of you guys already do, and, uh, and that's about fine. <laughs>